I am from Nicaragua and Mexico. Two countries where some believe indigenous people don't exist or aren't considered one in the eyes of the global north. I'm far away from my homelands, but I always remember I come from the volcanoes and lakes, the desert and saguaros. It makes me who I am, unique and unrecognized, but very proud. My name is Erika Tenorio. I'm a queer Nicaraguan Mexican indigenous from the Chorotega, Yaqui, and Autumn communities, respectively. I'm a first generation senior at the University of Arizona studying studio art illustration, Latin American studies, and minoring in American Indian studies. Growing up, I thought my mom's family was just Mexican and my dad's family as Nicaragüense. But both sides told me about our real roots. On my mother's side, my tata's family are from the Philippines and the Tonantam nation before the border existed. Instead of staying, my tata abuela left her village and moved further south to Mexico. My nana's paternal family are Yaqui. Her asu and apa come from the Yaqui pueblos in Sonora. They told me of the violent colonization that made so many people hit their indigenous identity. And in doing so, my grandparents weren't that exposed to their cultures. My dad's family is Chorotega, an indigenous community that extends from Nicaragua to Costa Rica. My mamita was born in Dirumo, a Chorotega village famous for their traditional medicines and witchcraft. My tata was born in Granada populated Chorotega village that became the first European town built in Latin America post-colonization. They talked about how dangerous it was to be a free thinker, let alone indigenous during a 43-year U.S. involved regime, which followed a revolution in the late 70s and Reagan's war on drugs in the 80s. They told me that aside from the arts, stories, and history, our people didn't have much of a culture or language anymore due to colonization. I never realized how much trauma affected both my families deeply to the point where they hid their indigenous roots for their safety and that of ours due to colonization and war. Growing up, I remember my husband Joy Native Sor as a mentee from when we were in middle school and high school, and he always talked about how fun the activities were and how much he wanted to give back to his Autumn community. I was never able to join as a mentee because I wasn't from a federally recognized tribe in the U.S. But yet, Native Sor sounded so interesting. The Native Student Outreach Access and Resiliency offers a fun and rare opportunity to provide a safe space for mentors, mentees, and instructors to share our personal experiences and ideas on what we can do to inspire and help our youth with means of having a sense of belonging for everyone. They understood the difficulties of indigenous recognition when it comes to the global north of the U.S. versus the global south of Latin America. I don't have enrollment or proof or documentation to show how indigenous I am. I can't express enough how that is not existent on the other side of the border. It's based on how involved you are within your communities or the acknowledgement, or if you have actual roots from the villages you or your families come from or if you have the traditional knowledge of your indigenous communities. I'm trying to show that people like me exist beyond the U.S. border. Native Sword created the first ever indigenous arts program earlier in October on Indigenous Peoples Day. I became the first Native Sword student to facilitate a painting program for indigenous students in Arizona that focused on the painting subject of what home meant to us individually whether it was a person or our homelands. My involvement with Native Soar has shown my peers and mentees that there is someone like me who exists, who wants to show the youth that being indigenous doesn't mean you're only from the U.S. where tribes are federally recognized. My parents always told me that I'll be the first in my family to get a higher education. In 2019, my husband and I became parents. Parenthood isn't easy, especially when you're still in college, but it gave me the new goal, to 
to finish my undergrad for my child. But this is a big weight on my shoulders. To make up the sacrifices my parents endured when they came to the U.S., to being the oldest child to pave this road for my siblings, and to show my child that I did it despite all the obstacles I endured. From the sleepless and frustrating nights, to the times where I wanted to give up on my education for many reasons. I sometimes think these higher education institutions don't support mothers, and it brings me to contemplate on giving up. It's frustrating and disheartening, but I can't give up now. Originally, I came to the university to become an animator for any of the animation studios in California. But as time went on, I realized I was more interested in giving back to my communities here. The moment hit me when I found myself standing in front of my art history class talking to my peers. I want to become a professor and teach the current and future generations, and I hope to positively impact my communities and give back to the homelands I come from. I came into Native Soar with the goal to talk about my high school and college experiences. But it's not always going to be easy or perfect. Everyone's journey is different. We aren't perfect about college life, as we sometimes don't know what we're doing, but we go with the flow and discover new methods that help our journey. I am a future educator for current and next generations. I want to make my families from Nicaragua and Mexico proud. To show them it's okay to feel safe and beautiful to be indigenous. Colonization and war caused displacement and trauma to my families, but I'm paving the path that we're resilient and have a voice. I can see why my husband enjoyed the activities and engagement the program offered when we were kids. Joining Native Soar was a great experience for me. He gave me the sense of belonging, where I am loved, strong, and matter. I come from the volcanoes and lakes, the desert and saguaros. I am unique.